Hi, welcome to the Brain Injury Answers Podcast. This is Dr. David Glazer providing the answers you need when a brain injury occurs. This podcast is for educational purposes only. For treatment, please consult your physician. This podcast does not represent the Department of Veterans Affairs. All right, let's get started. Question. I have sustained a traumatic brain injury, but I want to drive again. When can I drive? Why am I being told I'm not allowed to drive? Answer. Great question. Driving is often seen as the last step to full independence within the realm of brain injury recovery. While we're on the topic of independence, it's very timely because today is Independence Day weekend. Driving requires a number of skills to be able to do that successfully. As you know, the brain controls all parts of the body. So in order to drive successfully, one's brain must have recovered to a certain degree. In order to drive, one must have good vision, one must have good attention, one must have good reflexes. One should be able to hear decently as well. In addition, if one has had seizures, there are state laws preventing one from driving within certain amount of time period after a seizure. Each state is different, but most at least prevent one from driving after a seizure for at least six months. So really, driving is almost like standing on top of your head while trying to write and give a speech at the same time while watching your baby run around. It's very hard. It's very complicated. We think back to when you may have been Younger, as a teenager, learning how to drive. That first time in the car, you're just learning how to manipulate many different objects. So when one reaches the time to venture on to learn how to drive and drive again after a brain injury, it's really saying you've progressed through a lot of your rehabilitation and are now ready for that last mountain to climb. There are many places where one can have driver's rehabilitation in which not only do they work with say virtual reality and simulations they also then take you out into a car and to practice on the road just like driver's education when one turned 16 and first started driving in many cases from that driver's rehabilitation, one is then able to get an analysis of where one needs to improve with their driving. Maybe someone needs certain adaptations, such as hand controls, because there's an issue with their legs, which prevent them from accelerating properly or hitting the brakes properly. Maybe someone needs extra mirrors to be able to see the road properly because they can't turn their head right and left or up and down. Maybe in the course of the driver's evaluation, one comes to realize there's a new vision issue they never realized they had and one that needs to go see an eye doctor or get special lenses or get special glasses, um, such as sunglasses, if they find that the sun and the light is too powerful. Then there's a question of, well, do you let someone else ride in the car with you after you successfully gain that independence to drive? It's possible that with other people in the car, your attention may not be able to focus on the road as easily and that someone cannot be in the car with you. Or maybe you need someone in the car with you, not necessarily to help you focus, but to help you navigate so you don't forget how to get from point A to point B. Fortunately, there are many forms of GPS and maps, whether it be on 
cell phones or other electronic devices that can help someone navigate the roads in their local area that one may drive in. Also don't forget all the basics of road rules. One does not want to drink and drive as many people with a brain injury sustain their brain injury due to some sort of driving under the influence or due to someone else's driving under the influence. This leads us to remember that we don't drive on the road alone. We have to keep ourselves safe and we have to be good citizens of the world and keep everyone else safe. And we need to do our part to ensure safety so that everyone can get from their point A to point B back to point A on time and safely. And also remember that with driving comes a lot new new freedoms that can help you in other parts of your recovery or continued health. One may now be able to more easily go to say a psychologist or to another physician or to the gym. Things of that sort that help promote overall health and continued health after sustaining a brain injury. So as you see there are a lot of important points and factors that go into driving after sustaining a brain injury. Many people do return to driving so do not be set back by all these factors. But it is a mountain that you will have to climb in order to gain that independence again. So as we all celebrate July 4th weekend, I wish you all a happy July 4th and a happy Independence Day and blessings for your journey to independence, in this case, in the car. Happy Independence Day and safe driving. That's a wrap for today. Remember to email all your questions to braininjuryanswers at gmail.com. Check out the website www.braininjuryanswers.com. Thanks for listening.